So I'm going to open my project in, in Adobe Animate. And the goals are going to be adding sound to the environments. Right now we've got background music playing. It does its own thing. And uh, what I want now is I tap stuff and I will get some, uh, some sound happening on that. So it's going to be similar to, it's going to be similar to the music we've already played. Let's go over to our gate scene. So in our gate scene, the idea is that I open the gate and I want it to play a sound. Based on what we've already done, I'm going to open up my actions panel in the gate scene. I want to see the code that's already there for, for playing music. And we will see that it's similar for playing sound effects. What we've got in the code for the gate to play the background music is a little section that says create a variable with some sort of name of type. This type will be the same linkage name that there is in the library with a new instance of the sound in the library. So the sound in the library right now, I've got main muse. I've got an mp3 file, it's coming.mp3. It has linkage of main muse. And then so I'm setting myself up to play that mp3 from this variable. Then on the next line, the important part is main music.play. So to actually, in the most basic way, to play the mp3, we then say the name of the variable dot play and then some options if, if we want. But this has got three different things. One is that the sound is in the library and it has an instance name. Two, that we have a variable that references it in the library. And then three, a play. So if we've got a different sound, I have the sound of, um, where is the door? Um, glass, growl, welcome knife, creak. OK, so at the bottom. We've got a sound of the door creaking open. So when we set this up for the door, we're going to have a line that references uh, creak.snd, and then it'll be something.play so that it plays the sound of the creaking door. The difference will be is that I don't want the, the door to creak until it actually opens. The animation to opening the door is in the symbol. So to add a sound effect to some interaction, most likely you will put the sound code in the symbol. So let's edit the symbol of the door, the gate. You want to double click your door. And in the timeline here of the door, at some point, this is when we want it to play. Most likely, as the, as the frames of the animation happen, I also want it to play the sound of the creek. So we're going to need a blank keyframe on frame 5, because in my case, that's when the door starts to open. That's when I want the sound to play. So right on frame 5, the door starts to open there. So on frame 5 of the actions layer, let's add a blank keyframe. So in the symbol of the gate, in the symbol of anything you want to make a sound, you're going to need a keyframe to play the sound. So blank keyframe inside of the gate. And then I'll open my, my code panel, my actions panel. So sound effect of creaking door needs a variable. 
So the variable to, to keep track of the actual sound I want to play. And let's call this creaking and colon the linkage or instance name of the particular sound. Remember, we set this up a while ago. I'll remind you in a moment again how to add linkage in a moment. So it's creak one underscore SND equal to something. So creating a variable called whatever, which is creaking colon. It's of type something instead of type number. It's not a variable that holds numbers. It's not a variable that holds true or false. It's a variable that holds a particular sound. Equal to new instance of creek one underscore SND parentheses semicolon. So then again, it's the instance, it's the linkage name, but with the parentheses, we're going to create a new instance, a new copy of the sound file from the library and put it into this variable. This variable can only hold things of that linkage name. Sound effect for creaking door, and then creak, creaking dot play. Well, that was like our background music. We wanted our background music to play. On the background music, it was more complex because we had we had to keep track of pausing the music and replaying the music. For the sound effect of things, it's going to be a lot easier. It's that. It's VAR, the name of some variable you want to call it, plus the special syntax based on the instance name, and then the name of the variable that play. And that's it. So if we save it and run it, when we open up the gate, we've set up the code now that when the gate opens up, play the sound associated with that linkage name, which is the sound 3 file. Question? <clears throat> Will I keep the sound going to a, a two-second mark? That's a good point here. Will expand it to that? It will keep playing by itself. It will ignore the amount of time here. So if you've got a sound that takes 10 seconds, it'll play it, and our visuals will keep going. So when I'm in the other scene, that sound will still be playing. That's good and bad. It's like, it'll play by itself, and I want it to play. But if it's a really long sound, and I'm in the next scene, that other sound may still be playing, which doesn't make sense. So I would think about whatever your sound effect is, um, you know, have it be as long as whatever amount of time visually you want here. There is a way to control it for it to only play two seconds, but it's a little more complex, more set up. So try to have, when you have sound effects, try to have them be short, because they're we're just going to see it that they're just going to play, and if they're too long, they will they will sound weird. Okay, let's try that. Go ahead and set yourself up to publish it. Go ahead and play that. See about tapping on the on the set on the on the gate. Make sure your volume is up, and see if you can hear the gate creaking. And I'll put that back up again in just a moment, and I'll also remind you about adding linkage. As I've said before, that the um, the one of the ways to to succeed in doing your own version of the project is if you can get the version in class working, you can then just add your own stuff. I want, instead of a creaking sound, I want like a metallic gate sound. Well, I would import my sound into the library and give that new sound the same linkage name. I would remove it from this one and add it to the new one. So the code is going to look for something called creak1. And if you call the name of your, uh, if you call the name of your sound Creek 1, the code will automatically know what to look for. If you call it something else, if you call it Metal Sound, well then you're going to need to change your code to say something like Metal Sound, colon, etc., Metal Sound. So it's either change your code to accommodate your new thing, or when you import that new thing, change it to accommodate what's already there. So, in my case, I have my background music 
music of a new scene. And then the gate. It opens up and I go to the next scene. So I'm gonna stop that. So relatively a lot easier for sound effects because background music is more complex. You have to take into account, does it overlap with the previous music? It's different music, so it's got different code. We have to then deal with all of that complex stuff of what about when I exit the game? All of this event listener stuff about if I exit the game, pause the music, blah, blah, blah. So the background music is a lot more code. The, the, the music sound effect is way simpler. It just needs a linkage name plus that sort of syntax. If I uh, wanted to add or change the syntax, I mean the linkage of a sound file, remember you can right click the sound file properties and you've got action script. So if you're adding your own brand new sound after you put it into the library, you go to right click properties, go to action script, turn on export and give it some sort of name. And that's the name that's in the linkage. That's the name that I use when I say, give me a new copy of that sound into that variable, play that variable, and then it works. Let's do that again with the breaking of the, um, of the, of the window. Um, I've got that rock that I threw at the window to open it up. I want to play a sound on that too. So we're going to do something very similar to that for practice. I'm going to switch over to the door. I want the sound to happen when I try to open, when I try to, actually here we can do it to do two things. Maybe I want this like little growling sound to happen when they try to open the door. Let's do that one first. Then we'll do breaking of the glass. So you've got a couple of sounds here. Which one will work? Okay, so we'll do a little subtle growl one. I want that when I try to open the front door, you know, it shakes, but then I also hear the growl one. So same sort of idea. In the symbol of what I'm interacting with, we need to add the code. So I'm going to double click to edit the front door symbol. I've set up that I've got this animation. Um, I wanna start on frame two. On frame two, it's going to play the sound of the growl. Yes. Frame one has a stop. I, I don't want to play the sound there. We have we have stop. Um, it starts to animate on frame two. So actually, technically, it animates on frame three. Okay, we'll do frame three. Frame three is the first frame here where something changes. So blank keyframe on frame three in the actions layer. I want the sound of the growl to start as it starts to move, and that's on frame three. So new blank keyframe there, open up my code panel. So create a new variable, call it whatever. I will call it growl1 colon. Colon will then be the linkage name, growl1 underscore snd. Growl1 underscore SND equal to a new instance equal to new the linkage name again but then with parentheses because it is a it is a, an object Growl1 underscore SND parentheses this is the part that's going to be very very easy to forget so I will zoom in you need to have those parentheses right there it has it has a special meaning, so it has to be there. If you don't put it in there, that'll be an error. It's not it's not written correctly. Correctly has to have those parentheses. Why not add a note? Note parens parentheses parentheses at end of line. So 
Make a little note to not forget. Because it looks the same on the left if you just look at it, you know, without thinking too hard. I see growl one S and D, growl one S and D, I'm done. You have to have the parentheses at the end there. And then next, okay, we've got us we've got an MP3 file inside of this variable. Well, let's play the variable. Next line, growl one dot play parentheses. Growl one dot play parentheses. And that's it. It's gonna play the growl starting on frame two. Normally that this symbol is stuck on frame one. The door is just visible. When you tap the door, code elsewhere says, now play the animation of the door. So it'll go to frame three and play. When it gets to frame three, then it'll play the sound. It'll loop back to frame one where it stops. It stops jiggling. And if the person clicks it again, it'll then go again to frame three, play the animation of frame three, but then play the sound in frame three. So I will debug that. subtle, but I hear the growl, and then I will do the glass breaking. It's going to be 99% the same thing. In the symbol of the window breaking, I want to create a variable and then play the variable. So let's do that. I'm going to switch over to, I'll press back to go back, press back up here to go back to the, the scene, double click this window to get into the timeline of the window. It starts to break on frame three. So on frame three, I'm going to add a blank keyframe in my actions panel. I'll create a variable for that breaking sound, colon instance or linkage name equal to new linkage name with parentheses next line play that variable so let's see here um, actions var uh, we have a couple of glass sounds let's see glass one and then debris so either of those would work, but I want glass one for when the window breaks, and then I want glass two for when I knock the painting over. So same thing here. Uh, whatever we want to call it, glass one, colon, glass one, underscore SND, equal to new glass one, underscore SND, parentheses. These names do not need to line up. Uh, I see that it's glass one here and glass one here. They, they don't need to be the same. Um, this, this could be, you know, kitty. And then when I say kitty play, it'll play. It doesn't make sense, but it'll work because I'm inventing the name of this variable and therefore I'm using it on the next line. Uh, what will be a problem is if I say glass one SND here, and then over here I say, I say, for example, for some weird reason, crash1.mp3. That'll be completely wrong. So this new object is based on the linkage name, so that has to match there. But the name of the variable does not have to match the name of the data type. But then whatever you call it here, obviously then you have to then play what you created here. Let me 
take that back. Because the next line is glass one dot play with no extra pro no extra properties. Uh, on the background music, we had a 0, 10 in terms of, I want to start playing the sound effect from position 0 and then play it 10 times. Well, it doesn't make sense to do that here. I want the glass to play one time, and it's done. But if I've got a sound, you know, there is a little bit of silence before this glass actually breaks, and I, I don't have a very easy way in Adobe Animate to know how how much time that is right there. But it might be, you know, 1,000 seconds, M milliseconds, which is one second. There may be one second of silence here. So I'm saying play the, uh, the sound effect starting 1,000 milliseconds in to skip the silence, comma, one. Play the sound effect one time. I'm just picking a value. I don't know if that's right. Let's say it's only half a second of silence. So if one second is a thousand, how much is half a second? What's half of a thousand? 500. So I only need to put 500 here. Half a second, play it one time. This is optional. It may work totally fine with just having nothing here. But if you do have a sound effect that for whatever reason it doesn't start until some amount of time, could say that skip the first 250 milliseconds then play the sound comma only one time if I put any value like a 10 here it'll play the crashing sound 10 times which makes no sense so I'm just gonna see what it sounds like here with a skipping a little bit of silence and I will debug that You could also use other software to prepare your sound. I just downloaded it off YouTube and put it into my project. Maybe I want to open it in a sound editor first and cut out the silence at the beginning or at the end or increase the volume or do some edits. And uh, we do have, uh, we should have some audio editing software on these computers. We have um, Audacity, do we have Audacity on these? Yeah, we should have Audacity, which is a sound editor. If you need help with that, you can check with me. Let's see here now. So play that. Creek. Monster growl. Break the glass. Okay. So I broke the, the glass visually, and then I heard it too. And now I'm here so I can break this painting. So I, I think for, if in my case with that particular sound, I think 250 milliseconds skipping the first one quarter of silence, one quarter of a second of silence, seemed to work okay because that seems to be approximately one quarter of a second of silence. And so far we've got the, um, we've got two more places to add some sound effects. We've got in the hallway, when we break that painting, so same sort of thing. I've got glass two, and I need to play glass two when it breaks. This one will be a, a little bit different in that we don't want to hear the sound until we actually hit the ground. So it, it, won't, it might not be exactly frame three where we play the sound. It hasn't fully fallen. So we'll see here. If we open up the painting, the painting timeline. It starts to animate. Uh, actually, it starts to fall on frame 10. Hits the ground in frame 15. Okay, so I think on frame 15, that's where we want the sound this time. It doesn't make sense. Obviously, frame 3, nothing has happened yet. We have the wiggle that happens here. It hasn't broken yet, so it doesn't make sense here yet. Frame 10, it's starting to fall. It hasn't hit the ground yet. Frame 15 is when it's hit the ground, in my case. So frame 15, the final frame when it's actually broken on the ground. New variable.
glass two colon glass two underscore s n d equal to glass two s n d parentheses and then glass two dot play shave off 250 milliseconds and play it one time So if I test that one out, I'm going to, oops, missed something here, got an error, um, incorrect number of arguments, expected one, let's see, did I miss the parentheses, oh, um, yep, I missed something here, um, based on what we've already written. I missed something on this line here after the equals. What am I missing? It looks it looks correct, but something's missing. Yeah. New, exactly. We need it to say, give me a new instance of that sound from the library. Unfortunately, that error doesn't say anything like that. You're missing new. And unfortunately, a lot of times on these programming languages, on these debuggers, they are very unfriendly about what is actually the problem. Why can't it just tell me that the new is missing? Well, the problem is that programming can be so complex um, that some of these error messages really only point you to, there's something wrong here because we can't fully process it. Incorrect number of arguments expected one. So an argument usually is something in parentheses, and then it says expected one, but it's on line five, so unfortunately sometimes those error messages don't really tell you too much except to go look at that line. And then when I looked at it again, I remembered, oh, I'm missing the new. So I'll run that. No errors. When this one gets going, I uh, then will add the sound to the monster, to the creature on the right side, and the, the right hallway, and we will do a little bit of fun animating it. Right now that the creature appears at the end of the hallway, and it's coming right at you kind of ghostly, well, I want to animate it a little bit. So we'll do that after I check the sound. Play that, open the gate, break the window, right there, play with the painting, falls down with a crack, right hallway. I want that monster to make a sound and to animate. And then so we're on our way. Let's see, we'll go over to hall right. Okay, so we've got uh, just a trick of perspective in that the, the creature just gets larger. Because we've got a background in play, it makes it look like it's coming right for us. Um, but it's just growing larger on screen, and I made it so that you know it's, it's getting larger and it's also moving slightly to the left so that it stays in perspective of you know, it's coming down the hallway. And then eventually it gets pretty big. And maybe just for fun, I'll make it also even just a little larger. 
so that it really fills up the, the camera. So those are the things you can play with as, as you fill the details in. What I want is that I want that creature to be opening its mouth or, or, or doing anything. Um, so I, I'm going to double back on frame one. I'm going to double click the skull symbol, the mini boss, whatever, so I can edit its timeline. So I'm on frame one of the of the mini boss. I'm in the symbol, and here is when I can do things like animate it. Let's see. Actually, what we can do here is right now when a person goes to the right hallway the creature just comes at you right away. Instead, I want there to be a little bit of a pause for when people reach this scene, a one second pause, what am I looking at here? And then suddenly it appears. So we can do that in two ways. One, by having a pause in the actual scene. So before the creature appears, have it appear on frame one. Or we can do that in the symbol itself we can say that in the symbol, the creature doesn't appear until frame one, or frame one second. So I'll do it that way, in the symbol. Uh, let's go to frame one inside the symbol, and we'll press F6, uh, which will insert a keyframe. This basically copied the previous keyframe. And therefore, I'll go back to the previous keyframe and delete the creature on the screen. So there will be one second of an empty frame. And then the creature will appear on frame 25, 24. And then I'll animate it over here. So I moved it over basically to frame 24 length for one second so people can see something's happening. And then uh, I'll jump a couple of frames over, F6. And I'll draw some changes. We'll add the sound in a moment. So I'm just going to change it up. This will be what you can do as as you work on yours but I'm just changing it up somewhat so it's just going to be changing for a few frames During the lab time, I would make it more, more detailed, but I just want a few frames of change. And whenever I do something like this, I have to always remember that the timeline is going to play, and when it gets to the final frame, it jumps back to the first frame. I don't want that, because it's going to jump back to nothingness, and then start to blink again. So I want that after it plays the animation of this blinking stuff, it jumps back to the animation of blinking. So I want it to only loop within this section that it's visible. So we'll add some action script code to jump back. I'll add a new layer, actions. On my final frame of animation, F7. to this final frame, 29. I want it to jump back to 24 so that it loops within there. So 
So my code will say go to and play 24. right hallway there'll be a there will be a one second pause where we don't see anything then the creature will appear and it'll be coming at us and then it'll loop over and over within the amount of time four seconds in total i guess it'll be looping back and forth these few frames blinking and stuff it'll get to that final frame it'll loop back to 24 play again loop back over and over go to a play back to 24 so that it loops the sound effect um if i if we add the sound effect for example, on frame 24 is when the, the face first appears. We could add the sound effect there, and it'll play. But the way I've got it set up, it's going to loop kind of fast. I don't have a lot of animation to the character. So if I put the sound effect right away here, well, it's going to play the sound effect and then get to here and loop back and play again, and again, and again. So I could have the sound play one frame before the face actually appears, frame, um, frame 20, 23. Question? Why don't you just play the sound at the beginning of it? That's another way too, yeah. Those are two different ways. We could play the sound at the very beginning. We won't see anything, but we'll hear something. Yeah. That could be kind of cool. What am I hearing? I don't see anything. Then suddenly it appears coming at us. That's a way. Another way is right before it appears, we hear it. But I kind of I kind of like that. Maybe we'll, ha we'll hear it right away before anything happens. So let's back up. Let's do it on the first frame. So we'll undo that. Let's do this on the first frame. On the first frame, we will hear the sound. We won't see the creature. We'll see the creature one second later, and then it'll loop as it's you know, chomping at us. And it's just a matter of the same sort of thing. Create a variable. Growl2 colon growl2 underscore snd is equal to new growl2 underscore snd parentheses growl2 dot play and oops and I'm just checking here that one might also have a little bit of empty time there so I guess 250 comma one or this could be the example where I just don't want it to play once, um, maybe five times. So it's going to skip a little bit of time. It's going to play the growl. One second later, I will see the creature. Remember, this whole scene takes five, four or five seconds. And within that amount of time, it's going to growl five times. That might be too much. I'm just putting a few values to see how it is. After I test it, I'll decide my, my exact values. But now we've got the growl sound coupled with the animation, which loops. And then I'll, uh, I'll test that. Oops, I misspelled something, maybe. What's my message? Type was not found. Uh, did I spell that right? Oops, I put grow instead of growl. Okay, so that message was saying type was not found or was not a compile time constant. So it's saying grow, grow two was not found. Okay, that makes sense. This is called growl two. I forgot the L. So even if I didn't understand that, it's telling me go check line, uh, line one. So what's going on on line one? And I misspelled that. I put grow instead of growl. That was an error and then growl. Save and run that and see what we get.
the sound first, and nothing was there. And I can play with the timing and such as I as I figure out that takes too long. It's too short. I could add more time. So I'll play it again. Play. Breaking. I'm going to the right. Okay. So that was the right hallway. Um, to go back to the main hallway, we have not set ourselves up yet to go to the left hallway. So to get to the left hallway, we need a hotspot. We need some place to be able to tap on. So just like on the right, I made a new layer. Call it hall left. I'll draw a shape, turn it into a symbol, give it an instance name. Then I can write the code to detect that when I press the left hallway area, it goes to the left. So I'm going to create a new layer. Hall left, going to draw some sort of area to be able to click on. These colors are just temporary. When I turn them into real symbols, I'll be able to fine tune them, of course. I just want an obvious place to be able to click on. So if, you, if you're creative, and you know, if you draw a really nice uh, scene, and what if I had also drawn an electrical outlet? What if I put a little electrical outlet right here? Um, that could be something clickable. They click it, sound effect of electricity, and then it takes them to the game over screen because you got shocked. Mm -hmm. So any sort of thing uh, could be a clickable thing. You just need to make it into a symbol and then decide what to do with it. OK, so I'm going to turn that left area into a symbol, F8. Let's see, we already got some names, MC ending, MC hall right. I guess to follow the names already, MC hall left. I created a new symbol for that left hall. Give it the instance name, hall left underscore MC. Don't forget that. That is a, this, that is a thing we want to interact with, so it needs an instance name. I'm calling mine hall left MC. Okay, so uh, in, in our code, in this scene, we already have examples of the code that we need in order to make the left work. We have the right hallway working, so this code works to go to the right. This code will also work to go to the left with a couple of changes. We have something to tap to run some function. That function then goes some where? 
So that little chunk of code, I just need to copy it and paste it and change four things. So let's copy. Let's copy that chunk for Paul Wright. And then I need to change what's the instance name, Paul Left. Run a function, go Paul Left. Define it here, go Paul Left. And then it'll go to frame one of scene Paul Left. Easy. So Paul Left. Paul Left. Paul Left. It's going to go to hall left. This is one of the reasons to name things a certain way. Um, very consistent. And this this is a comment down here. If you want, you can also change this. But this is a comment, so it doesn't doesn't matter if you change that. But it might be a good idea to change it to keep it consistent, because that is the the end of that hall left code. If you want to test that, that should be enough of the code. Because it's just a copy of code that previously worked with different instance names and such. Left, so I'll click to go left. Goes left, and there it is. So I'm on the hallway to the left. Um, I've got um, so far three possible places to go through: up to the attic, door straight ahead, or um, door to the right. Now, you could also do sort of like hidden things. Um, there's kind of like an empty area. Maybe someone would be curious to click on that. Right, a whole blank area. Now, as as we test the project, we have to put some obviously visible things to click on. But I'll show you, you can make transparent things to click on. Because over here we've got... Um, a big old blank area. What if I make that? What if a person thinks about tapping something empty? Now, I don't know how you feel about when you play games and it's like things that are obvious to interact with are obvious and things like I have to click on the second pixel to the left of the bottom pixel. I don't know, do people like that, that they have to like click randomly? So if you want to do that in your game, I'll show you that we can make it like an invisible clickable thing. It's just changing the opacity of colors. But let's say each of these three things we can click on and um, you can decide which is the good one, which is the bad one. We can say that these could go to different scenes. We have not made more scenes. You could. You can make scene attic. Let me go up to the attic. You can make scene, you know, central door if you want. But let's say two of them will go to a bad ending. One of them goes to a good ending. And then maybe a hidden area to click on to go to the secret ending. So... Setting ourselves up here, we need to turn these three things that are here so far into objects to click. And then we need to create a hidden object here for them to click. 
So to each of these, I need to select them to turn into a symbol. So this is the, the door to the attic. Turn that into a symbol, MC attic. This will go to the to the attic. Well, it's it's gonna look like it goes to the attic, and then it's an instance name attic MC. So you want to turn that drawing into a symbol attic MC. Now I'll select that door. Call it maybe like left left hallway main door. So the one left hallway second door. Okay, so need to select that door. I'm using the lasso tool. symbol MC main door and I'll give it the instance name main door MC and I'll go back to the attic and cut that and put it to its own layer attic and then I'll do the right door here second door I'll make a new layer second door turn it into a symbol MC second door my main door, I'm calling it main uppercase door. You can do it all lowercase and it works just fine. But putting in some capital letters makes it more readable. Second door, same thing. I need to select it to move it to its own layer. Second door, second door MC instance name. Now, I'm not going to go through animating each of these or having them play a sound effect and such. That'll be something for you to do if you want. And right now, these are not fully clickable because this is empty in the center. It's not been filled in with a color. When a person taps, they have to tap on the actual edge of the door or the doorknob. They click right there, there's, it's empty. So when I edit, when I make each of these into a symbol, then I also want to fill, in them, fill them in with colors so that they are in an area to be clickable. And then I'll move the attic door to its own layer. And 
and then I can edit each symbol by just dropping a little bit of color, the same sort of red color so that I can see the boundaries of a clickable area. So technically, if I don't fill in that that part of the of the door, if a person does click right there, it won't open because that's technically transparent. Remember my background, just to be obvious here, my my stage color of my project that's invisible. It's there's no color there. The only things that are clickable are what I have drawn. So just to show be obvious here, different color. Um, if the person clicks right there in my case, if their finger happens to hit that, it's invisible, so it won't register as a hit. Now someone asked, um, I wanted to do a different color in each room. What if I want to make this whole room yellow like that? I like that. And then what if I make the, the hallway on the right a different color? Well, that, that, can, that stage color applies to the whole project. So wherever you set it to in a particular place or scene applies everywhere. So you don't want to set your, your stage color. You don't want to use that as a way to set the background of your project. You want to create a new layer called background, and then draw a simple square as big as your whole background on its own layer. Background layer with a square of the color you want. Because the stage applies to every single scene. So something like background. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you that if you did want to have a different color in a different scene, you, you should put it into its own layer. So in this particular scene, I've got that particular background color because it's on its own layer as a shape. And then when I go to any other scene, hallway to the right, it's still the original background color that my whole project is. Okay, let's say we'll take a, a little break here just to make sure you've got your code working so far and you've got your scene set up. Each of these has been turned into a symbol. They have an instance name. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes to actually make them work. And we'll have some lab time. And like I said, most likely um, I'll give you a little bit of extra time after, probably from 4 to 5, if you want to stay today, a little bit of extra lab time. And then on Wednesday, all day lab time. We should be able to get done what we need to right after the break. So it's 2.12, we'll take a break until 2.22, and then we'll go on.